Nigeria seems to be inexorably approaching a point of total lockdown as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Companies are increasing suspending operations at the moment. And while nobody has spoken about job losses and related matters, it remains a distinct possibility given the massive financial losses that will be incurred uh, when these businesses try to balance the books in the near future. With unemployment at dizzling levels at the moment, what would this scenario portend for the salaried worker as well as those in the informal sector whose daily sustenance depends on economic activities around them? We will now proceed to speak about this with Chris Oyeka, Deputy General Secretary of the United Labour Congress. Welcome to the program. Good to be here once again. Hey, Chris, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Well, tough times, not just in Nigeria, but also in the world. But the Nigerian government, as we've been discussing all morning, has taken certain steps. The CBN, the Federal Ministry of Finance. And, you know, in all of this, uh, there have been attempts to protect the average Nigerian and also to protect businesses. Even the Federal Inland Revenue Service has given an extension uh, for the filing of uh, uh, returns and accounts and all of that. And you also have, you know, the federal government introducing quite a number of measures to make life easier. From a labor perspective, do you think this has gone far enough? Uh, because many Nigerians are saying, well, the uh, government of Nigeria should also uh, give cash directly to Nigerians, particularly to the unemployed, people in the informal sector. Uh, or the self-employed, as we have seen in the United Kingdom, where a package of three billion a month has just been announced by the uh, uh, by the Chancellor. Uh, do you think we should do a similar thing here in Nigeria? And if so, do you think it's feasible here in Nigeria, where we don't have the technology, we don't have the data, we don't even have the money? There are a lot of things that ought to have been done. Uh, it is rather uh, late, but it is not. Uh, too late to start. Uh, one thing for sure is that um, the, the global crisis is uh, the implications on Nigerian people, Nigerian workers, is very wide and also very deep. But the uh, eventual consequence would depend on the response of the government, like you have rightly pointed out. Has the government responded adequately? Did, did, the, did, did the government respond timely? To us, we would say that the government has not responded timely. Uh, if the government had responded timely, perhaps we may not be where we are today with the spread. It, it may have been contained. Now, you look at, because of uh, the way government responded, Nigerian workers were exposed at the airports. It was Nigerian workers that received uh, um, the, the travelers that are going out and coming in at the airports and at the seaports and at the border crossings. And these people were exposed because adequate measures were not taken. I went through the land borders during this crisis, especially through the Seme border. And you could see that there was no testing going on. You could come into Nigeria and go out, and nobody at the former border crossings, nobody tested you. And I was wondering. The, uh, the other parts of the globe are experiencing this. Why is it that we are not taking measures here? So it meant that adequate sensitization was not done. People in government did not take, the, uh, take adequate measures to ensure that Nigerian officials, that Nigerian workers were protected in the places of work. Now, to the issue that you raised in terms of what uh, the palliatives they are putting in place, you ask yourself, those palliatives they are putting in place, have they factored in the workers? Have they factored in the masses? Yes, on paper, they will tell you, yes, we have factored them in. But you find out that in most cases, in most cases, at the end of the day, the only people that have been factored are those in authority and the corporate uh, uh, bosses. You, if you look at the various palliatives that have come and gone, look at what happened at the, at the 50 billion naira textile, uh, textile fund. It went away. Nobody knew what happened to that. Look at that, the one for aviation sector. Few people took them away. We didn't know where it went to. So palliatives, palliatives that are supposed to go to the masses, that are supposed to go to workers, don't eventually get down to them. It eventually gets scattered away somehow, and that is the unfortunate thing. And even when you look at the situation, the Nigerian physical space is so, is so narrow that most of the things they say they want to do, OK, look at. Um, uh, is it the, 
the uh, 5 billion that will go to the NCDC, and then 10 billion to Lagos State government. How much is it worth? For Christ's sake, they said that a ventilator cost about $25,000. How much of the money they are voting for will be used to buy ventilator, will be used to buy a face mask and all those? So we simply do not have enough money. If we had responded on time, like people who do not have money, a poor man would not want crisis, financial crisis to come so suddenly to him. He will make arrangements because he realizes that he's poor. But in Nigeria, we do not, we behave like a, a rich country, like big men. When we are supposed to behave like poor men that should prepare adequately before the crisis overwhelms them. Now it is here with us. The numbers they are reporting, is, is, is we, you cannot rely on that number. All of us know that you cannot rely on that number. And that this epidemic is here with us. And it's going to have very, very far-reaching consequences for businesses, for Nigerian workers, for the common man out there on the street by the time it, 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 uh, it ends. That's a very, very, a very, very dire situation that we have found ourselves in. Well, the numbers you're talking about are official numbers, and we should rely on them because the NCDC is doing a lot to make sure that we flatten this curve, as well as our uh, medical professionals and doctors at the front line of uh, flattening this curve. So uh, let's not paint the, the, the wrong picture. But let me ask you, Mr. Oyeka, uh, at this time, a lot of people are worried that the poor man you talk about and the poorest in the society are probably worried about dying from hunger than dying from COVID-19. So what are the social protection measures we should put in place? Former Vice President Atuku Abubakar says the federal government should give each Nigerian 10,000 naira. And just, just following in, in the footsteps of Dr. Abati's question, how realistic would this be? And what are those measures we should put in place? Because you have rightly said, we are here. The problem is here. How do we solve it? When you tell people to stay at home, it is not just staying at home. When you tell someone to stay at home, you have to make that home where he's going to stay comfortable. And when you tell someone to stay at home, you also ask yourself, does he have a home? That place you are telling him to stay, is it actually a home? Some people, their homes are under the bridge, and you tell them to stay under the bridge. Even the ones that have homes, do they have electricity? Do they have water supply? Who is supposed to make those provisions? Is it not government? What arrangement has government made to ensure that home becomes attractive to Nigerians to stay in? And those people that you are telling to stay at home, like the informal sector workers, my brother Ruben mentioned, are you telling them to stay at home? These are people that depend on daily earnings, okay, to feed themselves and take care of their, of their family. And you tell them to stay at home. What arrangements have you made? If you, you make adequate provisions for social net, transfers, and I, for me, at this particular point in time, if you supply public utilities, make sure that there is electricity and there is water to our homes, and make sure that there, there is connectivity so that we can connect to one another cheaply. And then you also make sure that we have transfers, you know, from, from the government coffers, like other nations of the world are doing. There is nothing wrong with sending 10,000 10, naira, it will be inadequate. But you must have to. Trade that money, for Christ's sake, uh, was conducted in this country. They were giving out money. They should give out money to the poor. They should give out money to the to Nigerian workers that they are telling to stay at home. Informal sector workers, the waste pickers, the scrap workers, the people, the cleaners, all those ones that go out, that say of off. For Christ's sake, uh, uh, about some days back, somebody called me and was pleading that all she needed was 15,000 naira for her to start a business within this period that will sustain her in the street by flying for puff. She asked for 15,000 naira. Is it we have a responsible, a responsive government? Government should be able to provide this for the citizens around these small, small areas so that they can use these monies to survive. For Christ's sake, even the 10,000 naira they are talking about, what is the period? Is it going to be for a week? Is it going to be for a month? For how long? 10,000 naira is not even up to the minimum wage that we know it cannot take us home. So we need to talk about something more serious. America is talking about $1,200 for an adult. Then in Nigeria, that translates to about 400 and something thousand naira per, per month for an adult. In Nigeria, we should be able to do something more reasonable if, uh, uh, if, if they're actually thinking about that. So we urge the federal government and the state government to actually consider the people that are going to be most affected by this, the vulnerable, the, the, which means the children, the women, the aged, the ones that are sick, should also be reached out to. 
the, you know, government can cancel some, some bills that we are paying. Electricity bill, for Christ's sake, in this period could be waived entirely or even reduced. You know, what utility, the other utility bills can also be reduced. House rents at this period could also be, uh, you know, in deals with, uh, with the landlords, could also be reached so that government pays part of the, uh, part of the uh, house rents. Also, employers can also be assisted to pay to pay workers instead of laying them off at this particular point in time. Those are some of the things that could be done by government if they actually want to assist Nigerians to, uh, to go through this period and then be able to fight the pandemic effectively and successfully. Well, uh, Chris Oyeka, it's not enough to just uh, criticize government. All of us are critical. But at the same time, government, uh, through its various spokespersons, is saying that, look, we all have a co collective responsibility at this time. And yesterday, the Minister of Information expressed concern that Nigerians are not, you know, doing what they should do to support government. Many Nigerians don't want to stay at home. Many Nigerians don't want to uh, obey the uh, health advisory uh, that has been given. Now, organized labor also has a role to play. We've seen pr the private sector uh, make, making efforts, but how about labor, organized labor? Uh, what is labor doing to support government's efforts? to also mobilize people in this war against coronavirus? We, we have started the campaign of sensitizing Nigerian workers, largely across the, across the states, on what to do, why it is important that they listen to the experts, why it's also important that they obey, they comply with the directives from the government. But what we must, we must point out is that the government has not thought it very, very uh, important to actually uh, consult with the uh, labor movement in, in engaging this outbreak. And that is why I am afraid that all the policies that have been churned out will not have the impute of workers, will not have the interest of workers and the policies at heart. Yes, we have critical role to play. Do they realize that we have that critical role to play? Do they realize that we, the labor movement, can serve as a vessel, can serve as a vehicle for delivering message? Look. I, I do not want to uh, cast as passion on anybody, but Chris this... Onyeka, yes, you know, your point is well made, but I don't think everyone will be waiting for government to come and uh, invite them to make a contribution. The organized labor also has a responsibility to be part of the war against COVID-19. Thank you for coming to The Morning Show.